Hey folks, here's a fun fact about me. I fall down a lot. I mean full on gravity defying tumbles. No trip wires, no steep stairwells. I've fallen in the kitchen. I've fallen while walking my little dog, Nayla Joy, doing laundry and even just standing still. No one's pushing me, and I'd like to think I'm not clumsy. It's just that I have peripheral neuropathy. You see, my legs and feet don't always get the message to stay put. And without feeling in some of my most important limbs, I hit the floor more often than I would like. But here's the thing. All this falling has me thinking about how we fall in our walk with God. Like my physical falls, sometimes we stumble for reasons we can't even explain. There aren't any obvious obstacles in our path. We just trip up in life and in faith. It says in Proverbs 24, 16, For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. And that verse speaks directly to us as believers. God knows we're going to fall, but he's right there to help us back up. So I may be a bit stubborn. When I fall, I get back up. Spiritually, it's the same. I may trip, but God is always there to dust me off, straighten me out, and send me on my way. Today, I want to talk about Judges 8, 4 to 12, and how it relates to this get up again spirit. Gideon and his 300 soldiers knew something about staying persistent, pressing forward, even when they were faint, still pursuing their goal. Listen, we may fall, but like Gideon, we keep moving forward, trusting God to strengthen us one step at a time. Let's dive in. Today we're looking at Judges 8. 4 to 12, beginning with verse 4 here. It says, Gideon and his 300 men, exhausted yet keeping up the pursuit, came to the Jordan and crossed it. So with Gideon's God-ordained, ridiculously reduced army of 300, God projects a chariots of fire scene, tortured strides to the finish line that all true followers of Jesus can relate to. Listen to Paul's take on the race we are each engaged in as we follow Jesus. And this is from 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. It reads, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul didn't want to be disqualified. And the author of Hebrews urges us to stay focused and steadfast. Listen to Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Notice the three action words in these verses. Lay aside, run, and looking. Jesus pioneered and perfected our faith, enduring severe hardships for us. He bore the shame of the cross and finished gloriously, becoming the Son in whom the Father was well pleased. Luke 3.22 we follow him by casting off the baggage of life and the sin that binds us. Once we ditch that brick-filled backpack, we can run free, not by relying on our own resources, but by fixing our eyes on the one who propels us to finish well. You may be weary in your personal battle right now, asking God, when is the race over? Well, we find an answer in Philippians 1, 6. It says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's right, until the day of Jesus Christ. It will be to God's glory alone that we finish the race. And looking back, we will realize it was him all along, working good works in us and through us, even our salvation in his Son. As you already know, our journey isn't smooth and trouble-free. <laughs> you and I face many detours and roadblocks. I pray we don't bow out of the race in unbelief. Certainly the evil one deploys his forces to cast doubt and discouragement upon us. I want you to know the teaching room ministry exists to encourage you to return to repentance and rely on Jesus Christ and his strength. He will recharge you and cheer you on right to the end. In Judges 8, 5-9, we see that Gideon, though facing opposition, never stops. Instead, he digs deeper into God's strength, trusting that God will exact retribution once the battle is won. Judges 8, 5-9 reads, He said to the men of Succoth, Give my troops some bread, they are worn out, and I am still pursuing Ziba and Zelmuna, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Succoth said, Do you already have the hands of Ziba and Zelmuna in your possession? Why should we give bread to your troops? Then Gideon replied, Just for that, when the Lord has given Ziba and Zelmuna into my hand, I will tear your flesh with desert thorns and briars. From there, he went up to Pinol and made the same request of them. But they answered as the men of Sukkoth had. So he said to the men of Peniel, When I return in triumph, I will tear down this tower. So the elders at Sukkoth scoffed at Gideon rather than helping him. God, forgive us, his church, for ever being divided or denying each other the help and prayer we need. Scripture calls us to esteem each other above ourselves. We see here Gideon's God-given resolve to defeat the Midianites with no tolerance for arrogance or division. God will often test our attitude, our heart attitude, towards fellow believers. Paul describes it in Romans 12. Let love be without dissimulation. Let love be sincere, in other words. Abhor that 
which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Judges 8.10 reads, Now Ziba and Zelmuna were in Karkor with a force of about 15,000 men, all that were left of the armies of the eastern peoples. A hundred and twenty thousand swordsmen had fallen. So God had reduced the Midianite army from one hundred and thirty-five thousand to just fifteen thousand. Still, it was fifteen thousand against Gideon's three hundred. Yet, knowing what our God can do, we are not worried. Judges 8.11 reads, Gideon went up by the route of the nomads east of Noba and Jagbaha and attacked the unsuspecting army. The Midianites retreated deep into the desert. They never expected Gideon to pursue them so far into that remote territory. Judges 8.12 reads, Ziba and Zelmuna, the two kings of Midian, fled, but he pursued them and captured them, routing their entire army. So through God's unfailing strength, Gideon captures the leaders and their remaining forces. All is accomplished through God's powerful spirit. From today's passage, God assures us that though we may be weary, we are blessed with his strength to persevere, continue in love for one another, and to finish well. With that in mind, I'd love to leave you with these verses today. This is Galatians 6, 9 to 10. It reads, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith.